There you go, exclusive preview there. The Porsche bumper is back and I've very loosely fitted it and it looks sweet. I just added to the bloody list of repairs, went to get out of the car, and as I went to get out, the door swung back in. Speaky grill hit my knee. Fantastic. Cheers. In today's video, as you can see, we've got the RS6 in the workshop, and we're going to get it on the ramp, and we're going to put it in the air, and just have a good look under it, around it, in it, over it, wherever we can, to see if we can find any other faults other than the ones that I kind of know that we've got. Now, if you didn't see the last video, click in the top uh, left, right hand corner, whatever corner it is, and go back and watch that video of me driving this for the first time and basically showing you the car for the first time. On that road test, I noticed a lot of smoke coming out the exhaust when accelerating. However, once I'd done it two or three times, it did settle down a bit. I do still think there is an issue though, and there was also an issue with the suspension as well. It was very floaty on mainly the near side front, it felt. Um, there was, it did seem to be a bit hesitant, maybe a little bit of misfire down low RPM, so we'll have to try and investigate that as well, although there were no co uh, codes stored, so could be a bit of a fun one. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching. If you do enjoy these videos and you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe, and also follow me on Instagram as well at saving underscore salvage. First things first, ignore all the mess and tools down on this side of the workshop. I'm having a bit of a clear out, um, and I've got some racking up here, and I've just put some more racking up here, so... Uh, everything's a bit of a mess, but I wanted to crack on with this video, so just pretend that it is not there. Um, right, I'll be honest, as I mentioned in the last video, I wasn't looking for this car specifically when I, I was looking, when I bought it. It just popped up, and naively, um, I'll admit, I haven't done any research on them. I have no idea what the, well, I had no idea. I have now subsequently looked, but I had no idea what the common problem was, uh, common problems were. No idea what I had bought, really. Now, after looking last night at the common issues with these cars, they actually, quite luckily, seem to be pretty bulletproof. The only two real things that ever popped up was a coolant hose and uh, a an, uh, leaking O-ring. Both required the engine to be removed to replace or rectify. Now, I was having a flick through the service history last night and there's quite a lot of history um, I do have a little book wherever that's gone here it is so it looks like just VW or just Audi VW have serviced it quite a lot it has got a full brilliant yeah, it has got a, a full service history and I also look saw this engine out replace coolant I don't know if that says pipe or not, coolant something. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that means that one of the main common problems with this car has already been rectified. Now, there are also some receipts for DRC shocks on the rears, two of those, uh, coil spring, and there are various other invoices for every everyday stuff, like a couple of uh, xenon bulbs, um, brakes all round, dis and pads all round. Uh, and just high level brake lights, stuff like that, which is pretty normal in most cars. Now, there's no, we do have an oil leak, and it is uh, around about, if you if, imagine this is the bottom of the car, it's around about here. Now, I think the common problem for the engine, um, the gasket that leaks is around about here, so I don't know if it's connected. We shall hopefully find out in today's video. But I know with this, with 215,000 miles on the clock, any sort of common problems kind of go straight out the window because this is probably uncharted territory with a car. I mean, let me know in the comments, have you ever seen an RS6 C6 with this high mileage anywhere in the UK? Let me know. And if you do know someone, please ask them, does it have any common problems other than the two things I've mentioned? So one of the things we can diagnose straight away is the damper on this near side front. So if I take you over to this side, um, one easy way to test dampers is just by pressing down the suspension and the damper should rebound the car and basically keep it stable very quickly. So instead of it bouncing like that, the damper is meant to, the damper's job is to sap all the energy out of that bounce and basically 
really quickly return the car to a normal height. So do that look. Doesn't bounce, like just pops up and then pretty much settles. But then if we go over to this side, like a bouncy castle. See that? See, look at the car, look at the difference. So I'm putting less pressure and look at the car just bouncing completely up and down. So that means that damper is not doing its job, which is why I said it was a bit floaty on the front. So first thing diagnosed, new near side front damper required. And another thing I didn't realize, um, I didn't realize you had to take the engine out to swap the turbos over. So now I'm actually quite hoping that the turbos are absolutely fine and the engine doesn't need to come out. So I've just had a quick look around the midrift. Uh, first thing I noticed straight away is you can see, you can see our daytime running lights are working fine on the near side rear, but you can see the inner ones, this lamp here is not working. Chances are it will need a new inner lamp. Uh, that shouldn't be too expensive because it is not RS6 specific, so that should just be a normal A6 part and therefore shouldn't be too expensive. And also neither of our number plate lights are working either. So that is something we've got to look into on the light side of things. Um, had a look around here, and to be honest, it's all looking fairly good. As I mentioned, the rear shocks were replaced, uh, I think about three or four years ago. So they are all fine. Brakes are fine, um, around about 50 to 60% worn pads and discs. Um, no bearings issues, no leaks or anything around here. So that's good. Same again this side, nothing untoward. Um, brakes around 6% worn, no bearing issues, nothing like that, no leaks again. You can see some wear on these top suspension bushes, not too much though, and you can tell by looking at this, this has been replaced at some point uh, not too long ago. I mean, if you can see in the corner there, no, you won't be able to see. I don't think you can see, look, there you go. See, it's, it's, it's a little bit warm, but I've checked it and it's not moving at all, so that's absolutely fine. And again, discs are on the front and the power pads are fairly new. Discs are about 60% worn, so again, that is fine. All the other good news is all tyres are all the same make. They're all Yoko's, I think. Um, and even though I've got a little bit of a split here, look. That's okay, it's not the end of the world. And they are all on about 5 to 6 mil, the tyres, so that is good. And the same again around this side. Um, these top suspension joints have been replaced at some point and there's nothing else. I mean, you can tell they've been replaced. Look at the uh, the scarring that someone's used to try and get this bolt out because these bolts are a nightmare. But again, discs around 6% worn pads, again, fairly new. So I'm happy with what I've found so far. Right, so now moving to the underside of the car. We'll start at the back. It does look pretty standard at the back just what you'd expect to see with a car with this sort of mileage and age. Um, nothing, no fluid leaks, no oil leaks, shocks, as I say, they have been replaced on the rear of this car, so they should be okay, and they are okay. Uh, exhaust looks pretty good. No leaks from the diff. Exhaust system looks good as well, nothing major. Give it the old, give it the old tap, nothing loose, all good. Flexies are good. So now we'll come down to the engine side of things and where our oil leak is. Now, I don't know if this is good or bad news. Um, I am, I'm looking at this car for the first time as well. I've literally just scanned over it, so I haven't done any research. But it does seem, this near side front corner, with, which, is, uh, which is the corner the damper's gone, there does seem to be a DRC leak. Now, it's not coming from the strut itself. It looks like it's coming from that union there. Now, I haven't done any research yet, um, so I don't know whether that's a union that can just be replaced, but if we're losing fluid in that shock, then that would explain why that damper is um, not working properly. So, as I keep saying, I don't know yet, but maybe that could be replaced and then the DRC system recharged and it may work. Don't quote me, let me know in the comments. Um, I like, getting feedback from you guys in the comments. A bit like the uh, oil overfilling that I've done. It has been many, many years since I've worked on, worked in a main dealer. And of those years that I was in the main dealer, I probably only serviced one of these cars. So apologies for forgetting that. Um, but I will, when we get the car back on the ground, I will address the oil overfilling issue and we'll do it correctly. But other than that, 
yeah, it just looks like a DRC leak. We'll have to investigate that a bit later. But if you look in here, it's hard to tell, but I don't know whether there, there definitely looks to be engine oil in there as well. So I think I've got a mix between DRC fluid and engine oil. So what we're going to do, I mean, we'll just have a look at the rest of the back of the gear. I mean, you've got your standard misting of oil. I mean, uh, you're going to get that on all cars, really. It's, it's quite hard to avoid it if it's had oil leaks at some point in its life. I mean, there is like little, doesn't, it's not major, it's not dripping anywhere else, but we will investigate it over in this side, looks nice and clean. Um, under tray is mostly intact as well, which is quite rare on an old car. They normally either get torn off and left off because people rip them and forget to put the screws back in. But this one mainly has all its screws intact and therefore the under tray is in position okay. But we are gonna remove it and look into the potential oil leak in there somewhere as well. Right, so under trays off, and it doesn't actually look that bad at all. You've just got a lot of, I'm not gonna say dry oil, but it's clearly not leaking now. There's no fresh oil anywhere. It's pretty much what you expect to see of a car of this age and mileage. Um, I'm just trying to find, because obviously you can see the under tray there, you can see where the oil's dripping, evidently there, which seems to be around about where that um, common problem with the O-ring is. But looking at it, it's quite hard to tell. I can't really see anything that's that fresh so unless it's dripping straight onto the under tray which it very well could be it's quite hard to tell so what I'm going to do I'm going to just going to take a break for five minutes I'm going to do a little bit of research see exactly where this pipe this o-ring is because I have a feeling it's in there I'm get the torch. we'll have a little break I'll come back with a bit more knowledge and understanding and then we'll see what's going on right after doing a little bit of research I'll just show you I've just taken some screenshots I'll show them off on the screen now this is what we're looking at. This is the common problem um, where it's circled. You can see the O-ring in there and that is where the common problem lies. Now, if we just flick back to the car, it's very difficult to see, but I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see it. But, um, no, I don't think you will, but it's, it's in this behind here. But looking at it, I can see it and Although it's got a misting of oil around it, it's not fresh. Oh, there's no point me showing you, I can't, you can't see it. Might be able to see. Very hard to show. Because I'm not very good with cameras anyway, so I can't focus them. Oh, no, no, I give up. Right, so although we couldn't see the front of it, I can actually find an angle where you can see the back side of it. So. Um, if you can even see that, that. Right, it's that pipe there. And if you can see, if I'm good enough at editing, I'll try and circle it, but it's there. Now, there was nothing coming out of that. There's nothing fresh that I can see. So what I've actually just done is I've just got some brake cleaner, as you can see. I've just cleaned up all round underneath, all around it. I've cleaned it up from the front as well, which I can actually see. So that is now nice and dry from around the front. I've cleaned up all the underside as well, as much as I can with some brake clean and rag. Right, as I say, I've just cleaned up the area so it's now nice and clean, and now it's clean. I have actually had a look in there and I can see what looks to be some residue of maybe some silicon. So whether it's been done or not, I don't know at this stage, but the next plan is obviously now it's nice and clean, we need to identify where the leak's coming from. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to start the car up, we'll lay it back on the ground, start it up, let it idle for a little bit, let it get warm, and then we'll turn it off, check the oil level, and we'll also put it back up in the air and see if we can see anything, and then we may go for another test drive. And I'm also gonna clean it, because I'm sure a lot of you in the comments are going mad because it's still dirty as well. Right, I saw someone put in the comments as well that the reason the engine start button didn't work is because I had the key in the ignition. Let's see if that is true. No, that is not true, unfortunately. I wish it was the case, maybe it's... Now it works. No. No, it just doesn't work. Let's get up to temp. She's sounding pretty sweet, although maybe slightly hesitant sometimes. Don't know if it's... Nope, not doing it now. Don't know, you just get this weird... 
the smell is so good. Tonight, Matthew. Right, I left the car idling for around 20 minutes. There's nothing, just my pile of what I've cleaned up. There's no oil leaks or drips on the floor or anything like that. I can't see anything obvious here as well. I've just had a look at that O-ring on the common problem. That is absolutely clean as a whistle and bone dry at the moment. So it may be a case of, um, we're gonna have to drive, I'm gonna have to drive it. So, Cause I can't, there's just nothing on idle. There's nothing leaking. Uh, it's just the DRC shop that's leaking. So, yeah, I'm, I'll probably what I'll do is I'll clean this under tray fully up so it's nice and clean. I'll stick it back on because I kind of have to because obviously you've got ducks, brake ducks, and cooling ducks hanging down that rely on the under tray for support. So I'll put the under tray back on, and then what I'll do is I'll probably just take it for a drive, maybe 15, 20, half an hour, and see, and then report back, take the under tray back off, and see if we can see anything obvious. But at the minute, I can't. Right, I've just cleaned up the under tray so it's nice and clean now. So we'll be able to see uh, if there's any oil leaks. So I'm gonna fit that now and then we're gonna move on to, I'm gonna remove this uh, near side front wheel and just have a look at that DRC leak and see if it's something that can be fixed without replacing the strut. Let me know in the comments. I don't really know much about DRC systems so let me know, but we'll uh, remove the wood and have a look anyway. Right, so I think I found the problem with the DRC. So obviously this side, the damper's gone, uh, bouncing around all over the show, and I found a minute ago that it's because there's a load of fluid uh, leaking out of this joint here. However, it is not leaking out of there, it is leaking out of there. Just above it, you can see the pipe split, all the mesh is split, and what has happened is obviously leaked out of there and leaked all over that union, making it appear that that is the problem. If I just get my torch so you can see but I mean you can it's hard to keep the camera still but it is proper split hole in it so that is why uh, our damper is gone on this side so I, I haven't done any research yet I don't know I'm hoping if I can replace this pipe that just only goes to there to there and maybe recharge the DRC system it may fix our problem um, at this point I don't know let me know in the comments what do you think but that seems to be our issue with this side and there we go look confirmation of the issue as I wiggled it fluid came out now I've just spoken on the phone to Audi and um, they sent me through a part diagram so I'll show you that now um, and we want number five because the one that's highlighted is the near side rear shock now this little pipe here is 10 inches long braided line uh, although it does have seem to have the um, bit, this is where you charge the DRC from, that is included in the pipe, so that's probably why it's expensive, but it's £230. Now, I'm now hoping that, I've ordered one, it'll be here tomorrow, I'm hoping that now replacing that pipe will rectify, and then obviously we've got to charge the DRC, but I'm hoping that will actually fix our problem with the suspension. If it does, then I don't know how much a DRC recharge is, I'm going to guess a couple of hundred quid, so £400 to fix a DRC suspension on RS6, I would say is acceptable at this stage, but obviously I'm sure someone's going to pop along in the comments and say, no, you need to do this, this and this, five grand. guys I've waffled on enough for today's video so I'm gonna leave it there for today I have just cleaned it it is looking epic the wheels have come out really nice 
but I will show you some clips of the car nice and clean in the next video. I'm not going to road test it because now I think I'm not going to need to replace the damper possibly. I don't want to damage it any further. So I'm going to wait till we've fixed the suspension before we road test it again. But as I said, that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please do subscribe and follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage. And I'll catch you in the next one, which is probably going to be the Golf GTI before we're back on this with the suspension fix. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.